What's up guys? I want to talk to you today about a uh, huge mistake that I've been seeing a ton of first time SaaS founders that are making uh, when it comes to their software pricing. And if you're making this mistake as well, you're not likely to succeed or get your SaaS some um, off the, uh, the ground. So watch this video and I'll talk to you about how you can take your pricing strategy put it in place and take you to 1K MRR, 5K MRR, and beyond. Uh, and this is the exact approach that I've used to take Zenmade to over $60,000 uh, a month in monthly recurring revenue. Uh, and it is a very familiar strategy to many SaaS founders. In fact, if you're watching this video and you already have a SaaS that's making 20 or 30K, there's a good chance that you're gonna have followed the pricing um, advice that we're about to jump into. Uh, make sure to subscribe here on YouTube if you're interested in more uh, SaaS marketing and software marketing tips, and make sure to join the Facebook group that is linked below in the comments. So there was a question recently that uh, that triggered uh, you know me to uh, to actually record this video in one of the software uh, groups on Facebook, the SaaS the SaaS Growth Hacks group uh, by Aaron Kroll, which I recommend you guys check out as well. Uh, there was a question that came in about uh, if you bring out the first product of a new version, do you A, charge cheaper than your intended price? Do you charge the intended price from day one and sort of grow the product into it? Do you offer the software completely for free when you're launching a brand new product? Uh, or do you give like a limited time coupon to get people up and running? And so the number one mistake that I'm seeing from SaaS founders, uh, particularly in the past maybe six or 12 months, is you see a lot of people that are coming in and are trying to charge the initial prices that they intend on charging in the long run. And so there are a couple issues with this uh, that are just really shooting people in the foot. Uh, the first one is that particularly when you don't actually have any customers, you have no idea what the hell your pricing is going to be anyways, right? So most of these guys are making it up, but they have it in their heads. They've started at this price and maybe some people are actually buying these products, but then those, uh, those founders won't actually raise their prices over time. And so, yeah, I mean, charging full price, like upfront, you're not going to get any traction. You're going to be going up un unless the only exception here is unless your, your product is completely, completely new and there's nothing like they're out. There's nothing out there on the market that's like your particular product, essentially meaning you have no competition. If you try charging full price upfront, you're never gonna get any traction because you're gonna have more established competitors that are gonna have an easier time always picking up business because they have a more established feature set and all of that stuff. And so that's probably the single biggest mistake that I see people making. And so you actually want to do here, well, actually, that's probably the single biggest mistake, just going through the choices that were actually proposed in this Facebook post, the next worst mistake that you can make is doing the beta for free um, unless you plan on actually having a freemium version of your product do not ever give the product away for free um, with the exception of it being an actual like influencer but everyone else that uses your product you want them to be paying so they value their product and so that you know you know that their feedback means something that it's literally better to wait to get like two paying users rather than to get 10 free users that aren't actually going to give you any useful feedback with on the product and so the actual correct thing to do here the best way to go about doing this is to start your product off at a very low price in comparison to what you initially intend to charge and to get people that are willing to put money where their mouth is and to make an investment in you that them being willing to try a 100 percent free product and not a free trial but a 100 percent free product versus them being willing to pay a single dollar right this is more about them trusting you with their credit card information than anything else. 
you want to make sure that your first couple customers are at least paying you a couple of dollars a month, maybe a couple hundred dollars a month if you're watching this and you're you know, ch planning on charging three to four K a month for your software when you first start. Maybe you start at $500 a month if that's the case. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grow into it. So as over time, as you add more and more features and as feature for feature, you're able to compete better and better with your established competition, then you're going to want your price to continue increasing over time as the value gets more and more. Typically, you'll want to grandfather the people that come in at a very early stage. That's a topic for a completely different video. But over time, you are going to want to increase your prices as your software gets more established, as you get more trust in the industry. Uh, you know, when you're able to begin to get those sort of economies of scale, um, you know, even in this day and age of just having, you know, 10, 20, 30 customers really makes you a lot more solid uh, in a lot of ways. And so then you're going to want to begin to um, to increase your prices until you get to the price point that you want. And so for ZenMade, for example, uh, which is obviously my company, uh, we started out, I believe, at $19 a month back in late 2013. And... Uh, let's see, we might have switched, I think it became $49 a month minimum, and until early, maybe 2017 or 2018, we didn't have a plan that was more than $99. And then we introduced plans that were like $149 and $199 a month, and now, now that we know the market and that we understand the true value proposition that our software is providing to cleaning businesses, around the globe, now we've adjusted our pricing to a usage model that exactly fits the, you know, again, the value that we provide uh, to our individual customers. And so now uh, we very rarely have customers that will get started with us for less than 67 or $76 a month. And we have a couple of customers now that are in the $200 uh, a month range, which may not sound like a lot to a lot of you guys, depending on the product and the market that, you, um, that you're working with. But when you compare that and when you look at ZenMate over time, you can see that the average uh, monthly amount that we make per user has increased over time and particularly when we made those pricing changes, but there's no chance that we could have started with our current pricing model with our initial feature set and picked up any meaningful business and gotten ZenMate off the ground. So <clears throat> if you're watching this right now, if you're new, if you're gonna be launching soon, uh, just drop a comment down below and let me know, like, have you actually considered this when it comes to your pricing? Have you ever thought about these different options? Or did you just have like sort of, um, you know, a starting price that you just decided in mind? Because honestly, you know, yeah, to be completely transparent with you guys, this is not what I was thinking when I started ZenMe. I never really thought about our pricing. I figured that it would go up over time, but it was a lot less intentional than maybe I would like to admit. So uh, yeah, if you're watching this right now, if you're gonna be launching soon, let me know if you've actually considered this with what your sort of pricing strategy is gonna be over time. And similarly, if you're watching this video and you're already making 10, 20, 30K a month or more, let me know, like, did you consider any of these things? Or, you know, honestly, were you a bit more like me where you were haphazard about your pricing in the beginning and then sort of like figured it out um, over time? So if you enjoyed this video, if you found this helpful, or again, if you're established and you wish you had seen this video a couple of years ago, go ahead and drop a like below. If you thought this was completely useless and you think I should jump off a bridge, uh, then go ahead and you know click dislike on the, uh, on the YouTube uh, whatever below. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna actually be starting, Fran, how many days are we doing, 100 days? I'm starting 100 days of YouTube content on SaaS marketing. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Hit the little bell on YouTube so you know when new videos come out or when I go live or whatever the hell it is. I'm new to YouTube. Stick with me here. And of course, um, if you've got someone that is literally pulling money out of their pockets, taking out a lighter and setting it on fire because they're undercharging their customers right now, 
or they have no idea what the hell they're doing, go ahead and share this video because that would be cool. And finally, go ahead and join the Facebook group on the Facebook group on Facebook uh, that is linked down below. That is B2B SaaS founders and marketers. And if you are interested in LinkedIn marketing randomly, uh, I wrote a book about that and about how Zenmade has grown our business using the LinkedIn channel specifically to generate cold traffic. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably seen quite a few about the retargeting that we do on Facebook. But for cold traffic, LinkedIn is one of our best sources. And I broke down the three ways that we actually go about generating new business and interest and all of that jazz. Uh, from that platform. So check out the uh, link below in the uh, in the comments or whatever or the description and uh, you can find a, uh, a link to that. That's no BS LinkedIn marketing um, with a very very cheesy cover photo. Fran, I really need your help with uh, a new cover photo for that. It's like an old white guy like holding money bags.